Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your Chief Security Fanatic here, and it is Sunday, so we are doing Breaches of the Week. But, truth be told, I'm actually recording this on Saturday, so some bomb-dropping thing came out on Sunday, and I'm not talking about it here, I may release it on the next day, I don't know, we'll figure that out. But anyway, thank you very much, let's get started, because this week in Data Breaches was absolutely nuts, but as always, before we begin... Thank you very much to Jay Dance, Joe DiBiase, Jacqueline Wolf, and Kevin Schneider. Thank you very much. Please keep sending those tips my way, and let's dive right in and talk about New Motion. Because on April 15th, United Sealing and Mobility, aka New Motion, filed with Montana after they discovered unauthorized access into their network. We're talking names, dates of birth, social security numbers, and employment information. They've sent out letters. So heads up to you, New Motion employees and customers as well. Moving on, let's talk about the Roman Catholic Diocese of Phoenix. On April 15th, they filed with California after discovering unauthorized party access to their infrastructure. Ad uh, names, dates, uh, uh, dates of birth, social security numbers, addresses, all that kind of stuff was hit. They've sent out letters as well. And with that, let's move on to our mini segment simply entitled, If You Just Spent on Cybersecurity, You Wouldn't Be... Be, you wouldn't be getting sued. I can't even think of my own title. You wouldn't be getting sued and you wouldn't be ruining your reputation. And first up is Comscope because they just agreed to pay 444000 to resolve claims that they failed to prevent a 2023 data breach. This settlement benefits U.S. residents who received a notification uh, basically in the aftermath of that when they discovered this incident in March of 2023. The plaintiffs in the class action claim that they obviously failed to properly secure their data on that March 26th data breach. And so during that complaint, uh, social security numbers and protected health information as well as financial account information was hit and more. So heads up to you Comscope customers, employees, go get paid. Moving on. Let's talk about Berglund Automotive because a federal judge dismissed a lawsuit that accused Berglund Automotive of failing to prevent a customer data breach that impacted about 51,000 of them. Now, attorneys for Kevin Dwayne Shelton, who had claimed the hacking left him vulnerable to identity theft and fraud, filed a notice of voluntary dismissal on Monday in the U.S. District Court in Roanoke, Virginia. The one-sentence document does not provide why they are withdrawing. So he filed the lawsuit in December, and Shelton asked that the lawsuit be expanded into a class action. Action on behalf of all Berglund customers, no decision was made on the request prior to his withdrawal, and he claimed in the lawsuit that obviously they had not secured any of this information. Berglund Automotive has locations in Roanoke, Lynchburg, Bedford, and Salem, Virginia, so heads up to you, Berglund customers. Moving on, the Axe Retirement Services, that's ACTS, they agreed to uh, basically a class action lawsuit settlement to resolve claims that they failed to protect data during a 2022 breach. Now, this benefits individuals. Individual Axe Retirement Services identifies as those among uh, those affected by the April 2022 breach. <laughs> they received a notice of breach in July or October of 2022, um, informing them of basically the hit to their data. And according to class action, Axe obviously failed to protect patient employee data from that breach. And we're talking names, social security numbers, account numbers, treatment information, and other sensitive data as well. Moving on, Convergent Outsourcing. This is a debt collection agency, so I'm sure nobody's crying a tear over this one. They settled a lawsuit after claims that basically they were at the center of a data breach earlier this month. The company, which has an F rating on the business, Better, Better Business Bureau, which I'm sure, I mean, even if they're like the nicest company in the world, everybody's going to complain about a debt collector because, quite frankly, they're pushy, right? They've got to be. So they agreed to a class act. They agreed to a settlement, excuse me, for $2.45 million to resolve those claims that they failed to prevent a June 2022 data breach. However, Convergent did not admit to any wrongdoing, despite plaintiffs arguing that Convergent did not implement any reasonable security measures. <laughs> Social security numbers, financial account information, and other sensitive data were obtained in that breach. City of Hope, the City of Hope National Medical Center, is facing at least eight separate class action lawsuits due to their April 2nd cyber attack, or rather they announced it on April 2nd. So plan, uh, plaintiffs Tammy L. Julian, Brian Ridley, Patricia Lopez, Garciela Rodriguez, Laura de La Paz, Pamela Krause, Sydney Saruman, and L.E., whoever that is, each filed class action lawsuits against City of Hope in April, claiming that they were affected by this. The City of Hope data breach was essentially reported on, or for, excuse me, first discovered on October 13 of last year when they detected suspicious activity and an unauthorized party had access between September 19 through October 13th of last year. Even though City of Hope learned of this, they did not notify people for five months 
there you go, 827,000 uh, prospective claimants here, so obviously not good. But if you use City of Hope for all your medical needs, you may be entitled to compensation sooner than later, and by sooner, I mean a couple of years. Ernst Health is the next one up. This is a Texas health system that is being sued by patients who have their protected health information compromised in essentially a data breach. We're talking 97,078 patients. Now, Ernst Health has hospitals in Arizona, California, Colorado, Idaho, Texas, Montana, New Mexico, Ohio, South Carolina, Texas, Utah, Wisconsin, and Wyoming on April, excuse me, February 1st of this year. Suspicious activity was detected on their network with an investigation confirming that basically an intruder was in between January 16 through April 4th of this year as well. Lockbit has claimed responsibility for that one, and Ernst Health said the compromised information are things like contact information, dates of birth, health plan IDs, health data, social security, driver's license, etc. The lawsuit filed by Joe Laura and Lori Cook on behalf of themselves and similar individuals that had their personal data compromised. So Ernst Health patients, you too may soon be entitled to compensation. You know what soon means there as well. Webster Bank. This company experienced a data breach last year via one of its third-party vendors, Guardian Analytics, and a huge amount of data apparently was taken from from their customers. So as a result, a class action lawsuit was taken out against the company, which is due to close in the coming days with customers affected getting an eligible claim of $25 up to $5,000 if you can show damages. Now, the deadline for submitting the claim, and this is the important one, is April 24th of this year. And as this actually went out on April 21, you've got three days to go file a claim and get your $25. Bucks. So heads up, Webster Bank customers. Moving on, All Care Pharmacy on April 12th, they filed a notice of data breach with Montana after discovering uh, that they basically had an, uh, uh, were accessed by an unauthorized party. And for the record, this is a regular breach. They are not getting sued yet. I say yet. So that end, that mini segment just ended. And if any of those companies had, had spent the money, they would be essentially not be getting sued. I wouldn't be talking about them. They wouldn't be losing their reputation. Now, back to All Care Pharmacy, who said names, addresses, dates of birth, prescriptions, social security numbers, and credit card numbers were all hit, and they are sending out notices as well. Cherry Street Services, also known as Cherry Health, they said they had a breach on December 21, discovered on Christmas Eve, perfect time to hit a company, nobody's watching the barn. The data breach notification filed with the Office of Maine's Attorney General said the cause was ransomware. <clears throat> now, they've identified 184,372 potential victims. <clears throat> we don't know what the nature of the attack is beyond it's looking like ransomware or what data was taken, so... Heads up to you if you use Cherry Health for all your health care needs. <laughs> Moving on, let's talk about Manx Care because the medical records of about 160 people were found in the home of a former Manx Care employee. This, for the record, is on the Isle of Man. Now, the data breach concerns rec uh, people who were treated be uh, between the years of 2000 and 2014, according to the Health Service. This came to light in September and was reported to the Information Commissioner's Office, or ICO. The ICO said they were satisfied with the handling of the issue that saw all affected patients being notified. The Isle of Man does not have a huge population, but they do have an absolutely fantastic motorcycle race. I highly recommend all of you watch just how crazy and awesome that is. Now, apologizing for the breach, a spokesperson for Manx Care said Manx Care that future strengthened, uh, further strengthened the safeguards currently in place to mitigate against such a breach reoccurring. Re <clears throat> in other words, they're training their people not to take their stuff home. So heads up to you if you use Manx Care between 2000 and 2014. Moving on. Visionary Integration Professionals, or VIP, on March 15th, they filed a notice of data breach with California after discovering that a, com that a company servers was accessed via an unauthorized party. We're talking names, social security numbers. VIP is now sending out individuals and apparent uh, individual notifications, and apparently Vision Integration uh, Professionals, <coughs> VIP, they're not VIPs at cybersecurity. Moving on, <coughs> excuse me. Let's talk about Kisco Senior Living. It's spelled like Cisco, the tech company, but with a K to start. Now, on June 6th, I'm just assuming I'm pronouncing that right. So on June 6th, they had a network disruption. They determined an unauthorized party had access to certain files. We're talking about 26,000 people. I don't have much more information than that right now, but heads up if you have a loved one in basically Kisco Senior Living, or you're listening or watching to this, at a, a Kisco Senior Living Center, you may be affected. Moving on, let's talk about Cisco. See what I did there? Brought them together. Cisco, yes, the massive tech uh, and infrastructure company. <clears throat> Basically, we are talking specifically about Duo. Now, they purchased Duo a while back. Duo offers identity access management, things like multi-factor authentication, and they are not having a good week. 
is a third party provider that handles the telephony for Cisco's Duo Multi-Factor Authentication, or MFA service, had been compromised by a social engineering cyber attack. Now Duo customers have been warned to be on alert for follow-on phishing scams. Customers were sent a notice explaining that the company handling SMS, text, and VoIP multi-factor authentication messaging traffic for Duo was breached on April 1. The threat actors reportedly used comp compromised employee credentials. Once inside the system, the unauthorized user downloaded SMS logs for specific users within a certain time frame according to the company. Cisco Duo did not identify the compromised telephony provider in its advisory. More specifically, and I quote, the threat actor downloaded message logs for SMS that were sent to certain users under your Duo account between March 1 and March 31st of 2024. The message logs did not contain any message content, but did contain phone number, phone carrier, country, and state to which each message was sent, as well as other metadata, example, date and time of message, type of message, etc. End quote. So if you're a Duo customer and you use text messaging to authenticate, first things first, don't do that. Use, use the actual authenticator. But if you did, you might want to check in with Cisco. Moving on, Lakewood Medical on March 21, they filed with Health and Human Services for their data breach. And we're talking names, social security numbers, address, dates of birth, phone numbers, email addresses, driver's license, and health information. LMC or Lakewood Medical has sending is sending out notices. Moving on, let's talk about Chinese drone maker DJI and I've done videos on DJI before one of which got me literally hundreds of just angry complaints by from DJI fans <laughs> that have these drones oh how we've come so far from that video here we go, because the Rootkit ransomware gang, spelled out Rootkit in Leet speak, is usually targeting uh, or known for targeting Malaysian organizations, and they took to Telegram on April 15th to say that they were planning to launch a cyber attack against DJI for supplying drones to Ukraine in its conflict with Russia. Quote, in our relentless pursuit of justice and digital warfare, we have set our sights on DJI, a Chinese technology company known for its unmanned aerial vehicles and drones. Our mission is clear to disrupt DJI's operations as they, as they have supplied drones to Ukraine for use in the ongoing conflict against Russia. The skies will tremble as we unleash our cyber arsenal on this complicit entity. Prepare for the storm, DJI. End quote. Now, just a day later, on April 16th, sure enough, the group said that they had successfully breached the company's systems and stole a treasure trove of customer data that is now available for sale. And I quote, the stolen information includes sensitive details such as order IDs, dates and times, customer names, tracking numbers, pricing, drone specifications, contact information, shipping details, payment methods, and more, end quote. That is according to Rootkit. So, if you own a DJI drone, one, don't give me hate mail on this again. <laughs> like, honest to God, people, go do your homework on this. Go find that other video, and you can ex you can see just how dangerous these things can potentially be. And obviously, check in with DJI because your data just might have been stolen. Moving on. Let's talk about AuraSure Technologies. They filed with uh, an 8K with the Security and Exchange Commission, discovering an unauthorized party gained access to their infrastructure, and essentially an unauthorized individual or entities were able to remove and exfiltrate certain amounts of data. I don't know what that is, but AuraSure confirms that if any customer data is uh, compromised, they'll start sending out notices. So heads up to you, AuraSure Technology customers. Moving on, Catholic Medical Center. Federal officials are investigating a data breach at Catholic Medical Center. They say happened earlier this week. The data breach was first reported to Health and Human Services and apparently 2,792 people were affected. Investigators have categorized this as a quote hacking slash IT incident. That's all we know so far. So heads up to you if you use Catholic Medical Center for all your medical needs. Moving on, CIS Information Healthcare Services. They're also known as Equalize RCM and First Credentialing. They filed no with Montana after getting hit as well. Uh, essentially, the sensitive information that was compromised was name, social security, government IDs, dates of birth, driver's license, electronic signatures, financial account information, health insurance information, medical information, mother's maiden name, passport information, if you sneezed in the third grade, and everything else. Now, upon their investigation, they've started sending out letters as well. <laughs> Moving on, St. Louis University down, I would assume, in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, they are notifying former students and patients that 
provide their personal information, including last names, although interestingly enough, the article says least names, if that is a thing, dates of birth, uh, social security numbers, driver's license numbers, passport uh, numbers, health insurance, and medical information as well, may have been accessed and or stolen. So heads up to you if you matriculated through St. Louis U. Moving on, HBL CPAs on April 16th, they filed with Montana after discovering somebody got into their network. We do not know what that information is, but HBL CPAs has begun sending out letters. If you get your taxes done by HBL, you might want to check in. <clears throat> Moving on, Goddard Systems. They basically noticed, notified Massachusetts after an attacker wasn't in, got into their network as well. Sensitive information was stolen. Goddard began, has begun sending out information uh, to the individuals possibly affected. And for the record, Goddard, I believe, is like a daycare center. So if you've got a little one in the in the daycare center with Goddard, you definitely want to check in. Moving on, Greylock McKinnon and Associates, or GMA. Now, I did this one um, last week, and this is actually an update from that breach because the Justice Department last week had to declare. This week, Medicare recipients in the Ozarks essentially have to declare a data breach as well. So if you're living in the Ozarks and you're on Medicare, you thank you very much, Greylock McKinnon and Associates. So here we are, but that's what we're talking about. So eventually you're probably going to get some kind of compensation, not nearly enough. Moving on, Citizens Property Insurance on 17, on April 17th, excuse me, they filed with Montana after saying somebody got into their uh, their network as well. I do not know the sensitive information, but Citizens Property Insurance began sending out notifications also, so heads up to you. Moving on, Mobile Guardian. This is a device management app or a DMA and it's installed on personal learning devices used by students. So iPads, Chromebooks, all that kind of stuff. They're essentially put there to control the flow of information and not allow students to go places they shouldn't go or install things that they shouldn't. The data breach resulted in an unauthorized access of names and email addresses of parents and staff from five primary schools and 122 secondary schools in Singapore. Now, this is according to the Singapore Ministry of Education, or MOE, and the MOE said it was notified by Mobile Guardian that its user management portal had been breached this past Wednesday, and the incident occurring at the company's headquarters in Surrey in the UK. So <clears throat> we may be seeing a global data breach, and the Singapore government may be the first to declare, but if your school district uses Mobile Guardian, we may be in for trouble all over the place. Moving on, <clears throat> Let's come back to the United States and talk about telecom giant Frontier. Some of you may be listening or, or watching this on your Frontier internet connection on your in your home. Now, Frontier Communications reported a cyber attack to the SEC this past Thursday. They provide internet services in more than 25 states. They have almost $6 billion in revenue in 2023. Now, the company said they detected unauthorized access on April 14th. They started, you know, the containment measures, et cetera, et cetera. Bay, quote, based on the company's investigation, it is determined that the third party was likely a cybercrime group, group which gained access to, among other information, personally identifiable information as, uh, other information, personally identifiable information as well. The company said in an SEC filing and apparently their 8k filing was very poorly worded and for the record my notes are usually copy and paste from articles I very rarely you know will type or add something in and when you hear me kind of go off the cuff like I am right now that's totally unscripted for the record now and forever this is the process that I use but with that let's move to the finalies because we have three finalies for you this week and quite frankly these are big ones and you may not necessarily know who they are. Well, if you're in cybersecurity, you're going to know one of these right off the bat, or you should if you're in cybersecurity. But this is a huge issue. So <clears throat> the first one is World Check. Now, you may not know what they are, but they're actually rather important. A financially motivated criminal hacking group says that it stole the confidential database containing millions of records that companies use for screening potential customers for links to sanctions and financial crimes. Now, the attackers calling themselves Ghost R said that they stole 5.3 million records from the World Check Screening Database in March and are threatening to publish that data online. Now, World Check is a screening, a screening database used for quote unquote quote, know your customer or KYC checks, allowing companies to determine if prospective customers are high risk or potential criminals, such as people with links to money laundering or who are under government sanctions. So this is pretty much a check to ensure that as you're doing business with somebody, they're not trying to rip you off. Now, the attackers told TechCrunch that they stole the data from a Singapore-based firm with access to the World Check database, but did not name that firm. The portion of the stolen data, which the attackers shared with TechCrunch, where I'm getting this information, 
includes individuals, excuse me, who were sanctioned as recently as this year. Simon Henrik, spokesperson for the London Stock Exchange Group, they maintain this database, told TechCrunch, quote, this is not a security breach of the London Stock Exchange Group slash our systems. Now, the incident involved a third party's data set, which includes a copy of the World Check data file. This was illegally obtained by this third party. So, we are, quote, quote, we are liaising with the affected third party to ensure our data is protected and ensuring that any appropriate authorities are notified, end quote. <clears throat> now, the Lock London Stock, Ex Stock Exchange Group <clears throat> did not name the third party company, but did not dispute the amount of data stolen. The portion of the data stolen seen by TechCrunch contains records on thousands of people, including current and government of uh, current and former government officials, diplomats and private companies who leaders are considered, quote unquote, politically exposed people who are are at a higher risk of involvement in corruption or bribery. The list contains individuals accused of involvement in organized crime, suspected terrorism, um, intelligence operatives, and a European spyware vendor. There, this, this data varies by record. The database contains names, passport numbers, social security if it's an American, online crypto account identifiers, bank account numbers, etc. So this is a huge one in the sense that you have very sensitive people that may be on this list, not necessarily because <clears throat> they've been caught money laundering, but potential terrorists or potential government leaders that may be susceptible to things like bribing are on this list. So if this data gets out, it is pretty damning. Not a good look for anybody involved. Moving on, let's talk about MITRE. Now, if you're in cybersecurity, you should know the term MITRE. You should know the word MITRE because this ain't good for us. This really isn't. And if you don't know what MITRE is, MITRE is a nonprofit organization that operates federally funded research and development centers to advance national security and serve the public interest. They do a lot of different things and a lot of different good for us in cybersecurity. You may be familiar with MITRE's attack framework. I'm not going to go into that right now. That's a whole other discussion, but those are the things that they're doing. Quite frankly, MITRE is doing the Cyber Lord's work. Now, MITRE's mission, as I mentioned, is to discover new possibilities through objective insight and trust act, trusted access and to create unexpected opportunities from a unique vantage point. And MITRE, oh, it just, it pains me to say it, unfortunately revealed on April 19th that it was one of over 1,700 organizations compromised by a state-backed hacking group in January of this year. Now, the MITRE database, which involves chaining, or data breach, excuse me, which involved chaining two Avanti VPN zero days, highlights the evolving nature of cyber threats and the challenges organizations uh, face in defending them. In other words, this zero day was either out there and MITRE didn't patch it, or it was so flipping new that there wasn't a patch out there and might have just happened to get hit. Here we are. Palo Alto Networks had a 10 out of 10 CVE on their public facing VPN like a week ago. And that was a major, major issue. And so hopefully if you're running a Palo Alto firewall, you've got that one updated too. So these things do happen. The MITRE data breach was detected after suspicious activity was not noticed on MITRE's networked experimentation, research, and visualization environment. This is known as NERV. It's an unclassified collaborative network used for R&D. Now, following the detection, MITRE promptly took NERV offline, launched an investigation. Uh, obviously, internal, external cybersecurity experts. There's a ton of us, uh, you know, basically floating around the MITRE ecosystem <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. Now, Charles Clancy, MITRE MITRE's chief technology officer provided additional insights explaining that the threat actor compromised the Avanti Connect Secure appliance used to provide connectivity into trusted networks. Uh, Clancy also stressed the need for the industry to adopt more sophisticated cybersecurity solutions in response to these advanced threats. So not fun, not good look for MITRE, but, but as always in cybersecurity, we are a collaborative community. We're all in this together. So MITRE, we're all with you. Hopefully it's a minor, minor thing, but Obviously, we're, we're, we're all rooting for you. And the last, finally, we've got is Space Eyes. Now, you might be familiar with Five Eyes or 14 Eyes or 100 Eyes if you watch the Netflix series Marco Polo. But Space Eyes is a company that provides geospatial intelligence known as GeoInt tools to the U.S. government and also commercial customers. And this ain't good because government agencies Space Eyes does business with include the Department of Justice, Homeland Security, and various branches of the U.S. military, crucial intelligence bodies such as the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency as well, or NGA. So, Intel Group, it's a prominent Serbian hacker from a threat group known as Cyber 
N words. I'm not saying that on a recording um, or ever for, for that matter, has claimed to breach uh, Space Eyes, a geospatial intelligence firm, gathering exclusively, uh, catering exclusively to U.S. government agencies. Now, the breach, which was allegedly um, compromised, which allegedly compromised the digital infrastructure of the Miami based firm, stands to expose the U.S. US national security data. Now, Intel broker claimed through a message posted on Breach Forum that it took the threat actor only 10 to 15 minutes to access sensitive data from Space Eyes systems. That ain't good if, if that person isn't lying. So Intel broker claimed the stolen data compromises, quote, highly confidential documents about Space Eyes services for national security within the U.S. government, end quote. The stolen data, according to meeting reports, we're talking full names, phone numbers, company names, job descriptions, email address, password hashes, and location data, coordinates and addresses of several government officials. Obviously, that puts a target on their back for things like assassination, kidnapping, all that kind of stuff. Intel broker has previously leaked national security information before. Uh, Acuity, the federal contractor, got hit through them. So this is a huge one because if they're also able to maintain persistence, you may be able to excise, let's say, the initial point of uh, entry forensically. But if they've got dormant malware or information they can run identity theft scams, let's say, on Space Eyes higher-end employees or top-level employees that have access access deep into the U.S. government, given with who they work with, this is a huge problem. So we're going to see where this goes, but this was an absolute crazy week for data breaches. And so thank you for sticking with me. Were you affected? You were, whether you realize it or not. We all were. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please attempt to stay private. Thanks, everybody.